Hey guys, Bismuth Oxide here. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be my uh, mostly unedited, uncut version of my experience unboxing and building the brand new Anchor Make M5 3D printer. Before we get into that, I have a quick disclaimer to make a few things clear. First, I will be releasing a full review of the Anchor Make M5 very soon, so keep an eye out for this video. The other thing I really need to clear up is that the quality of this video is not going to be very good. Uh, it was my first time trying out something like this to record from a first person perspective and it really didn't go as well as I wanted it to. But I'm going to be uploading it anyways because I don't want to waste the footage and the time it took to get that footage. I will be providing timestamps in the description to skip to a specific step. Enough rambling, on to the video. Alright, we're going to start the unboxing. As you can see, I've already cut the tape here, but... Just gonna clean it up, make sure it opens up good. So right off the bat we have this very nice, you know, pretty spongy foam. And then, so starting from the top left, we have some black PLA Plus, Anchormate brand. We have two spools of white PLA Plus, also from Anchor. We have a neat looking toolkit. Kind of hard to open so that's what's in there very nice comes with a pair of side cutters which is great we also have the quick start guide but i believe there's an issue with this and you do need to use the online version we have a spare hot end it looks like standard c13 power cord nothing special this looks like a filament holder. And then some assorted nozzles, screws, nuts, bolts, etc. And then I believe we were to remove this next layer of foam. And here we have the printer gantry itself. So I think, I'm just gonna take it out like that. So this is one solid piece. Put it off to the side very carefully. And then removing another layer of foam, we have the print bed, the magnetic build plate. Those seem really nice. They are uh, metal, they're not glass, and they've got kind of like a, like a rough sandy texture on them. Very neat, so it says right there, 235 by 235 millimeters, that's the print area. Here we have the rest of the printer. Very nice, CNC machined. It's very heavy, and this is huge. And under there, that's it for the unboxing. Now we're gonna move on to the assembly process. All right, so I'm just now gonna start the build process, but chances are I'm gonna speed this up because I have a feeling it's gonna take a little longer than I would like.
So one thing that Anchor put out on the mailing list and through the internet is that you have to feed these wires through, otherwise you will run into some major issues later on. So just being careful that those wires go through. And that's mostly on. I imagine I'm going to have to put in some screws. So. Yeah. So for this step, you need the M5 screws. And there's four screws for each motor mount. So I'm going to do that next. And as you can see, I've gone too fast, grabbed the wrong screws, and completely made a fool of myself. So now, I'm going to edit this part out, and you're not going to know. So these are, in fact, the correct screws, the ones that actually say M5 on them. Hexagon socket head screws, that makes a little bit of sense now, doesn't it? I can't imagine you're going to see much of this, but that's okay. Because... Other people will have made better videos about this. I imagine this would be a lot easier to install on an actual table, not on my basement floor, but, you know, learn from me. Don't assemble this on your basement floor. Um, some of you might know the carpet. Yeah, whatever. Don't be a nerd about it. It is what it is. Okay, maybe not. Don't be a nerd about it, but I am aware that it could cause static shock, and I'm not, frankly, concerned about it.
some of you may note that this is taking a very long time. Well, at least for me, that is absolutely correct. I imagine this will probably be shortened quite a bit. I'm probably going to speed it up, put some funny music on it, but... Or I might just ditch the clip entirely, because I think my head's too damn close to the printer and you can't see a thing. Alright, so we've just got the left one completely screwed in. Now we're going to go and plug in the motor wires. Okay, and then we're also going to use these convenient wire holders, grommets if you will. And we're going to plug in the left, oh geez. There, that's the left motor USB-C port. Use the grommets, sort of care, maybe. Okay, and that one is mostly installed. I noticed those screw in. Um, I guess I'm gonna do that later. Now I'm gonna start on the right motor. Same idea, exact same procedure. Maybe, just maybe it won't be so long. Okay, oh no. Don't forget your socket in the screw. Now we're gonna do the same thing as the left motor. We're gonna plug in the JST style. I don't know exactly what this is, probably SH, maybe ZH, I don't know. JST style motor plug. Plug that in. And again, route the wire with the included grommets, which are sorta of nice, but also kind of not great but that's okay it's the thought that counts and plug these in right there again trying to keep it neat and tidy okay yep so we've done that we've done that 
and we screw it with those little screws from earlier that I definitely didn't misplace or lose or anything of that sort. I don't know. I'm just going to say this came from the 2.5 slot. These are the same size. So I'm not too familiar with metric, but so, okay. So it's number two hex key that fits in the 2.5 screw. Oh, this shot's going to be terrible because I'm laying on my side, but you do what you do for the first person, I guess. Okay, that one's in. Okay, that's done. These are all installed. Those are attached. Now we could put the back cover back on. I just need to find it first. I don't remember where I put it. It's probably behind me. I found the cover. Alright, so now we're going to Make sure that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. We're going to put this cover back on. That is now on. Great. So next it's the filament holder. That's with the M4 screws. So we're going to move this around. Move these out of the way. And simply flip this up. Being careful not to, you know, slam it into the ground. Um, at this point, I'm also going to try to remove this foam. This packaging material. It's in there pretty good. There's that. There's this. It's definitely installed well, that's for sure. Use this neat little wrench to pry out the foam because I don't have nails that can get in there. There we go. Um, at this point, I'm also going to do the peel. Let's get a good shot of this. So I now have the M4 by 12 screws. Those are going to be used to attach the filament holder. Fortunately, the wire for my 
first person camera is getting in the way. I wonder what orientation this goes in. I'm going to double check the orientation before I do anything dumb. And it's facing outwards, okay. So you want it facing the same direction that your extruder and your nozzle are on. All right. Or you could alternatively mount it to the side, which I'm not going to do because I don't have the space for that. So I'm guessing I'm going to need the size 3 bit because that seems to be how metric works. That's cool, I guess. These are some nice countersunk metal screws. So I'm simply going to hold this here. Oh jeez. Yeah, that's not coming back, is it? Oh, that was easy. What are fingers? And this is not the M3. This is a bit 2.5 maybe? Winner winner chicken dinner. I don't know why there's no rhyme or reason to what that uses. That's not lined up with anything now, is it? Alright, with the filament holder now installed, the next step is to plug it in, install the app, and update the firmware, which I'm going to do now. <laughs> 